Have you seen this cartoon before? There's a good chance you have. This viral cartoon is the work of Don Mockler. And in order to talk about the future of vaccines, she drew inspiration for vaccine from the past, the smallpox vaccine. I'm Fabio, and I'll be joined by co-host Romila shortly. And I invite you to join us in asking, how are COVID-19 vaccines developed? And how is it different from vaccine development of the past? Hey Fabio. Hey Romila. So this is the infamous cartoon. It is. And I asked you to join me here today because this is raising a lot of questions for me. And one of them is, how are we able to get access to the COVID-19 vaccine so quickly when a smallpox vaccine took centuries? Mm, and it's a question many in Canada have. In May of 2021, researchers in Ontario and BC actually looked at over 4,000 tweets in Canada. And of the ones that were vaccine hesitant, a third felt that the COVID vaccine was rushed to the market too quickly. I actually had a conversation with Dr. Margaret Liu. She's the inventor of DNA vaccines. It helped pave the way for mRNA technology that we have today. She's based in San Francisco, but she really helped me contextualize what the acceleration of vaccine development actually means. Hi, Dr. Liu. Your invention was foundational to the development of the mRNA vaccines. Why do you think there was concern over how quickly the vaccines were developed? I think that some people have been concerned about the speed, particularly because of the terminology used. So in the United States, the actual development of COVID vaccine project was called Operation Warp Speed. Now, for those of you who, like me, are Star Trek fans, when you think of warp speed, you think of a spaceship actually jumping through space so quickly the stars go screaming by and you actually kind of skip a lot of space. So this raised actually a concern, a problem. And as someone who was developing the vaccine, how did you feel about it? I was concerned as a vaccine developer about whether or not things would be done too quickly. However, in fact, what was done was to simply accelerate areas that were mostly dependent on finances. So what happened, for example, was instead of testing one candidate at a time, Pfizer actually put four candidates in the clinic. Now, usually they don't do this because of the cost. They'd rather try one, and then if that works pretty well, they just stop and go with it. But in this case, they said, we want the best candidate, and so they put four candidates into the clinic at once. And vaccine developers were able to invest in creating multiple vaccines at once. Okay, that really helps to add context to the warp speed of it. And I wonder, if the smallpox vaccine had come out during this era of social media, would we still have, still have the same level of skepticism? Yeah, it's a great question. Dr. Liu says she encourages skepticism. It's part of thinking scientifically, asking these questions, looking at the method of research and the data. What we need to do is take that skepticism and weigh it against the benefits. So when we think about the safety of anything, we always think about actually a risk benefit ratio. Now, maybe some people of you can relate to this if you are afraid of heights or if you're afraid of flying. But if you think about something that we do every day for many of us, it's driving. And of course, we all know that there are car accidents, there are risks, but we still drive because there are benefits to us. Well, I wanna tell you about my family because this is a very real issue that I think about often. And that is that my father was killed in a car accident that was caused by a reckless driver. Even I, as a four-year-old at the time in the car, remember the scene and what happened. And yet, despite the fact that there are risks to driving, in the United States, 32,000 people die every year, and there's actually many, many more who are injured, I still drive. And the reason is because I make the calculation that the benefits outweigh the risk, and so I still drive. But I do also use my seatbelt, and I drive carefully, and there are airbags in the car. So I make the calculation that I still will drive, but on the other hand, I also try to protect myself 
as much as possible so that the risk-benefit ratio is one where the benefits clearly outweigh the risk. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Dr. Liu. It really grounds the reality of how we make these decisions every day. After talking to Dr. Liu, I want to take a look at the risk-benefit ratio of the COVID-19 vaccine in a more visual way. According to the Canadian Transportation Safety Board, out of 160,000 car accidents each year, around 3,000 result in deaths. Visually, the number of car accidents can be represented by the diameter of the science world dome. The chance of fatality in a car accident is 1.75%, or in relation to the dome, the size of this log. However, for deaths linked to the vaccine, the chances of fatality are 0.0000021%, or the size of this grain of sand when compared to the dome. Remember the cartoon that I showed you earlier? Yeah, Don Mockler's. That's the one. Her cartoon really impacted me, so I decided to reach out to her. Coming from New Brunswick, that cartoon allowed her to have conversations about COVID not only with her neighbors, but with people around the world. And one of these conversations even included an old friend who had a change of heart. I'll let her tell the story. I got a lot of messages from people saying things like, you know, I had similar conversation with one of my children, or I remember my mom had that mark on her arm. So it seemed to just connect with people. I had people comment that they thought it um, gave a message without being too preachy. A friend I hadn't seen in a while, she said, Oh Dawn, I'm so excited about your cartoon. I saw the story about it in the newspaper, so I cut it out. When I went to visit my sister, her husband doesn't believe in getting a vaccine and, and they weren't going to get it. Um, so she said she took the, my cartoon and she brought it to her sister. She said, you, you have to look at this. And so she talked to her about it and it did convince her sister and she did end up getting the vaccine. So really that was, that was one of the nicest stories that anybody told me. It's easy to get people to agree with you if they already agree with you. It's really hard to get somebody to change their point of view. I hope that happened more than once, but I know it happened once. <laughs> that is such a touching story. You know, people all over the world resonated with Dawn's cartoon because COVID is a global issue. With global impacts. And having access to vaccines means we can go back to doing the things that we love, like going to the movies, going to concerts. And in my case, it means I can go back to see my family. And that visit cannot come soon enough. So happy for you. <laughs> How's it going? Good, how are you doing? I am good. <laughs> That's not what we're doing. I'll do it one more time. Should do that again, sorry. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs>